In this video, we're going to walk through a few of the handy little tips and tricks, tricks that you might not be aware of in ERA that are useful shortcuts or just um, kind of one-off analysis that you might not be aware of. So I'll just open up our standard base case example. And the first thing that I want to show you that I think you'll find uh, especially useful is if you want to edit mud properties for an entire whole section. So not just the drilling operation or the tripping operation or, or maybe not even when you're actually drilling the hole but you're running casing or cementing. If you want to change all of it so you don't have to repeat that input, you know, three or four times, what we can do from the summary screen is right click and throughout the whole program it's it's highly advisable to try right clicking in different places because it does uh, pull up some unique uh, opportunities to manipulate the program but uh, if you right click on the section and here you see where the cursor is on intermediate one by right click it opens up this opportunity to edit the section mud and now if I make any changes to the mud properties whether that be rheology or density let's just say it's a uh, on 11 pound per gallon mud, it will change uh, the density and rheology for each of these sub operations. So all four sub operations in this whole section will now be updated with the new density and rheology. That saves you a great deal of time. Uh, the other thing that I think is quite useful is when you're in a particular sub operation and you're starting to do comparative analysis. Um, let's say that I want to analyze um, tripping out of the hole, tension and torque, uh, maybe back reaming just so at least I've got two plots to look at. Yep, go down to two plots. If I wanted to change something in one of the major parameters, maybe the drill string for example, by clicking on the ghost curves and let's say I change the length of the five and a half drill pipe dramatically. You'll notice that I automatically get an overlay of the previous scenario in light gray, and then the new scenario is the bright colored curves. And whenever I make any changes, gray is the original scenario, and colored bright colored curves are the new scenario. Uh, the ghost curves do not apply to limit lines, they just apply to the load lines. So this is a real handy way to get quick comparative analysis. Uh, locking the axis. If you happen to be in snapshot mode, let me just reset the plots here because I think I've already made some changes to a lot of these and uh, they're not in auto scale mode. But by default, plots will be in auto scale mode. What that means is when you move the drill string up the hole, the plot scale is going to change automatically with you. And so it's a little bit hard to get perspective of just how much the loads have changed as you do that. So the quickest way to alter the scales is to just click on this lock scale button. And now, whatever scale the plots are on, as you move the string up and down, the scale won't change. It makes it a lot easier to get quick comparative analysis, or at least get an appreciation for how the loads are changing as you move up and down the well. really like that lock axis feature. The other way to manually do that is to double click on the plot and uncheck auto scale. That's essentially what lock axis is doing, is it's unchecking auto scale for both bit depth and the x x, x and y axis. Uh, the last thing that I think is uh, important here while we're on the topic of uh, looking at the curves and calculations is the, the uh, sorry, down here at the bottom, the calculation options. And under calculation options, you can determine which limits you want to view. Uh, is it the pipe tension when you're picking up, pipe tension when you're slacking off, rotating off bottom? If you recall from our limit curve conversation, uh, we can change which, which curves are displayed uh, real quickly and easily from this screen. Uh, also, whether or not the helical buckling limit or the sinusoidal buckling limit show up on the driller's view plots. And uh, as long as we're here, the plot options. Plot options allows you to reorder the sequence of the plots. For example, if you wanted to see right next to the tension plot side forces instead of torque, you could do that by clicking uh, on our snapshot plots and just simply move them up the order until side forces takes precedence over torque. So now I've got side forces and tension right next to each other. Very useful way to rearrange plots. Uh, the other thing that I think is worth talking about is setting up a stuck pipe load case. And we happen to be in the right operation for doing that. In a tripping load scenario is where you would want to set up your stuck pipe load case. I'm going to zoom out here to a, uh, well, now we'll do two plot view. 
And what you're doing in a stuck pipe load case is uh, you're trying to determine how much overflow you can apply and hold torque at the same time. And you can do that by turning off the rotary and then applying torque on bit. And what you're basically telling the program is, okay, if I hold 5,000 foot-pounds at surface and then I work the string up and down, torque of 5,000 foot-pounds will be felt from top to bottom throughout the entire string. And now my limit curve, if you remember back to the limit curve discussion, will be affected by that held torque that's in the string. If I was holding 40,000 pounds, all of a sudden the limit curve is going to be lower due to the excess torque that's in the string. It looks like I've gone way too high because the torque that I'm applying is in excess of what the tube can handle. So let's uh, use something a little more sane. Let's say 20,000 foot-pounds. There we go. Now at 20,000 foot-pounds, the limit curve is telling me that when I'm picking up, I should not pick up any higher than this value to avoid overloading the string. So this is a very useful plot to put in front of a driller. In fact, what you could do is just put the pickup plots on one page, change the scale a little bit, and say, okay, Mr. Driller, if we've got a 0.25 or 0.2 friction factor, this is the hardest that you can pull. And really, it would be appropriate to take the curves that are not in line with the friction factor that you're assuming for your limit and just show that for this friction factor curve, this is what you'd have if you were not stuck. And if you were to apply overpull, this is the highest value you could see on the weight indicator. Very handy little uh, feature. There's a myriad of other ways that you can operate this stuck pipe situation, but this would be the most common application, just trying to determine what's the maximum pull at surface for a given amount of torque held in the string to make sure that we don't overload something somewhere in the wellbore. Those are just a few quick handy tips and tricks. Uh, hopefully they get you pointed in the right direction.